Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 2 of Game Dev Tycoon. Thank you all so much for your support on the first episode. Your lovely comments and words of wisdom mean a lot to me, and it's really great to see you guys get behind this new series, and I hope to be having a lot of fun with you. Uh, don't worry, things do pick up. We get some really interesting things happen later on in the game, but let's see where it takes us. Game Dev Tycoon is our very first game, and it means a lot to us that you are enjoying it. With your purchase, you'll support our little... With your purchase, you support our little startup, and this will hopefully make sure that we can bring you more games in the future. Seriously, you rock. Thank you very much, and have fun with Game Dev Tycoon. I will. Okay, so straight on in here, we do have contract work available to us. This basic, oh, hang low, <laughs> it's just gonna give us a tutorial. Contracts are a useful tool to earn some extra cash when your balance is low, and can also be useful to generate a small number of research points. Contracts require you to generate a certain amount of design and technology points before the time runs out. Decide carefully what contract you accept. If you miss the deadline for a contract, you'll have to pay a penalty, so it's better to start out with smaller contracts and see how much you can handle. So yeah, basically these are just things you can desire, uh, do um, in order to get a little bit more money. We're actually doing okay, okay? I think that was meant to be all right. Uh, with Puffy the Sardine Slayer, so I don't think money's a problem with us. So what I am gonna do is go to research here, and I'm gonna research a custom game engine. This means we can add in our own features to our game engine rather than just basic sounds and like 2D graphics or you know, like text-based games and we definitely want this because this is a huge part of developing much much better games and much more profitable games okay that is done done there we go you've successfully researched custom game engine you can now create your own game engines to get started close this message and click anywhere to bring up the action menu okay yes create custom engine sweet so we're gonna call this um the star 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 f what what are they called like like fusion engines in like starships because like engine is obviously going to be a pun off engine stuff you know what it's going to be like starbound that that's what it, our engine is going to be called instead of bound star games it's starbound okay so we can add in 2d graphics v2 which is great linear stories and add in some save games as well so not much to uh, start off with but oh there we go you're now creating your own custom game engine once the engine is finished you'll be able to use it when creating new games kind of waiting for the tes to launch from ninvento um, oh probably the sardine slayer is now off the market did quite well though uh yeah i'm waiting for the tes to launch hopefully we can get this done um, in time for the launch. There we go, today the new game platform TES from Ninvento has been released. So that means we can create our first game on the TES and see how well that does. Fingers crossed it does grand. Although at the same time I kind of do want to do like uh, another one for the G64. But hey, our new engine, Starbound, is now complete. Congratulations, your first custom game engine is now ready. You should try using it in your next game. So this should hopefully help us create a much better game. Um, what do we have in terms of... Okay, so pick a platform. So, um, we have to pay 80,000... Well, I guess cash. There's, there's not actually a currency in this game. Um, for the licensing, to be able to put our games on the TS to begin with. And then on top of that, again, it's, so yeah, basically we have to buy an 80 grand license first. Which is really expensive, but it's going to be worth it. Um, let's go for a horror game. Uh, I'm guessing horror. What would horror work best as? Uh, I'm thinking like either action adventure. Actually, if we could combine the two, that'd be great. Let's go for an adventure game. Did we already do one? Oh well, let's do another one. Horror adventure game on the TES. We're going to use our new Starbound engine. Let's think. A horror adventure. The Legend of the dead i was gonna do like a pun of legend of zelda since that's an adventure game but since it's a horror no let's let's change that the undead with a lowercase u let's do this 2d graphics version 2 so this will be a much much higher rated game hopefully fingers crossed if you take a look at our cash is running quite low let's make a linear story with a save game and let's think it's an adventure game, so I'm thinking stories are going to be quite important. Um, less important, probably less important would be engine and gameplay. 
around about there, I assume. Put more, more into gameplay. Really, adventure games rely heavily on stories, so that's definitely what I want to do. Ooh, we may not have enough money to finish this game, actually, but look at all the points going into this. Jeez. Okay. Um, let's think again. Um, adventure games are quite heavy on dialogue, I guess. Not so much on AI, really, because that would be like uh, action games. I think action games definitely have a lot of AI. Uh, let's crank dialogue all the way up and keep level design around about even there. And go for that. Okay, not many bugs so far. Looks like my experience is paying off. Look at the design. Man, that's really cranked up. Wait, was there anything we could have added in stage two which I didn't add? That That's kind of worried me. Don't need sound in an adventure game. Uh, what we do need, however, is great world to explore, which looks very nice. Let's go for that and see what kind of game we can make uh, for the Legend of the Undead. Okay, nail out those bugs. Got a very high design rating for this game. I like to let it run over a little bit so that we can see if we're going to get any bugs. We've spent a lot of money doing this. Okay, haven't found any more bugs, so let's just finish the game there. Okay, new record on design, of course. Um, bonus, new combo. Leveled up quite a few things there as well, which is fantastic. Let's release that. Let's release that. And we can now research game tutorials. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, should be able to generate a game report for that just before the reviews come in. Come on, tens across the board. Let's do it. I see a ten flick in there. A seven? Star Games? Really? You know, Star Games is... Wow. Informed Gamer does not like our game. Whoa. Shows potential from Game Hero. Maybe we need to stick to the G64 for now. Uh, falls a bit short. Dang it, man. I thought for sure that was going to be a winner. We put a lot of money into uh, The Legend of the Undead. Oh, let's see. How much does it sell in its first week? 8.8k. Eek. I post an RSS report, The Legend of the Undead is complete, and we get the following results. Horror Adventure is a great combination. World design seems to be very important. Oh, that's good. And platform genre match TES Adventure is bad. Okay. Good to know, I guess. No bad games, or bad games for the TES. Let's develop a new game. Let's jump straight back in there. Actually, no. Let's, let's uh, actually research a new topic. Uh, sports game. Why not? Let's research a sports game and see what we can do. That's probably definitely going to be like a simulation. Um, I guess action. Action simulation. I guess would work well. Let's just go for simulation. Okay. Develop a new game. Uh, it's going to be a sports game. Uh, simulation. It's... Hmm. Do we try putting it on the TES? I don't think I want to. Let's just, you know what, it's only got 26% of the market share, but let's try PC. It's the cheapest one to develop for. A game engine, obviously Starbound. Um, right, a sports simulation. It's going to be a management type game. Oh, if only I could remember how to spell lacrosse. <laughs> be like, lacrosse manager. Um, what about rubber duck racing manager? Because rubber duck races are a real thing. Uh, let's go for 2D graphics V2. Haven't unlocked 3D graphics yet. While generating game reports, you start to gain insights into the development process and learn about what works well and what doesn't work well. These insights are shown as hints on the development screen, unless you've turned this option off in the settings. The hints range from plus 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 to minus minus and indicate how important an area is for this type of game. When hints have question marks at the end, e.g. question mark, it means you have insights from a game in the same genre, but you're not yet sure whether this holds true for this particular genre topic combination. Okay, so stories and quests, obviously for a sports simulation game, we're not really going to need a linear story. I really don't think a simulation game needs much story or quest. In fact, I've, haven't I already done a simulation game? Crank the gameplay up, crank the engine up to about there, and let's go ahead with that. See how well that does? Okay, now let's think for a simulation game. Dialogues are rubbish. Artificial intelligence, crank that up. Uh, bring the level design up a little bit because simulation games tend to rely around um, level design. I mean, we don't have to think it's going to be a management game. But it's just a simulation game. 
Okay, and for the final one, uh, world design probably not too important. Let's bring that down. Uh, graphics, however, going to be great and sound. Let's put the sound up, bring the graphics down a little bit more. Okay, let's see how Rubber Duck Racing Manager goes. Legend of the Undead is now off the market, sold 21,969 units and generated 153k. Let's actually take a look at our game history here. Puffy the Sardine Slayer actually did better. Actually, Basement Crawler did the best. Hospital Sim didn't. Oh no, no, Puffy the Sardine Slayer did the best. Fingers crossed we've got a hit game here. The recently TS home console by Nintendo has proven to be a massive success. Sales number have exceeded expectations by far. As my customer says, I love the games that come with the TS, and playing with a controller is so much more fun than on a keyboard. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, let's nail out these bugs. This is quite a high rated game, actually. Well, for, for what we've done so far. Finish that up. Don't want to take too long. Okay, new record on both of those. New topic and a new combo as well. Fantastic. Oh, my phone is right underneath my ma uh, my microphone. Let's move that. Um, mono sound. Sweet. So we don't have basic sound anymore. Well, we have to research and then put it in an engine. Reviews are now in. Tens across the board. Or give me a seven. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, not bad. We do have quite a basic engine. Very good. Eight. Oh, that's much better. Another eight. The focus on graphics served this game very well. Come on, give me another eight. Seven. You know, average rating of 7.5, not bad at all. Let's generate a game report for that. And wait for the money to roll in. Let's see, come on. Read 9k. Okay, an extra 50% of what we normally get, which is pretty good. Uh, sports simulation, a great combination. While the design seems to be not very important, platform genre match is great. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, let's do a little bit of research. Let's research some mono sounds and some tutorials at the same time, because if we can put more stuff into our games, then we get more stuff out of our games too, especially with stuff like simulations. When so our market research, the recently published game, Rubber Duck Racing Manager, is a surprise hit. The Rubber Bounce that game is fairly new to the gaming industry, but we cannot wait to see what they will develop next. Oh, thank you. You know, we're, we're only at a quarter of a million in the bank. We research Monosound. Research our first engine part. To be able to use this in your games, you need to create a new engine which includes this part. Uh huh. so we won't quite do that just yet because I do want to add in some game tutorials into that as well. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have... Oh wait, I, no, you don't need research points to make a new engine. Uh, but we are going to make Mark II of the Starbound engine. Okay, game tutorials made. Let us research a new topic as well. Oh, a racing game. Yeah, let's go for a racing game. Racing games are really good for money from what I remember. Uh, the increasing variety of gaming devices also creates a market for more specialized games. Some platforms have become more popular with the younger games, uh, while others cater for the more mature groups. As more and more developers enter the market, we expect developers to focus their games on specific age groups to really make an impact. So we can now research target audience, and unfortunately I've used all my research points on this new topic. Uh, Rubber Duck Racing Manager is now off the market. Wow, that did like twice as well as my other games did, so let's make one more game before we call this episode quits. Okay, and before we do that, we're also going to create a new engine as well. We're going to include everything. It's going to cost us quite a bit for this, but this is going to be the Starbound Mark II. Actually, let's put a full stop in there, make it look more official. Eee, 150,000, that's half our money is going into creating this Starbound Mark II. Following the massive success of the TS console, there are now rumors circulating that Vina, another Japanese company, is planning to release a home gaming console of their own. Ho 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 ho! Uh, what's it called? Um, competition for an inventor there from Vina. Dun dun dun! What a screwdriver just sticking out of the cupboard. Clearly, I don't pay much uh, attention to my garage here. <laughs> And also, where's the garage door? Probably over this wall, or this wall, probably this wall actually, because it's usually opposite the main door. Although that's not true for my garage at home. I don't have a garage. Oh, 100k engine, invest over 100k in a new game engine. Cool, thank you for the achievement. Uh, your new game engine, Starbound Mark II, is now complete. Sweet, let's develop a brand new game. It's going to be a racing game. Racing games are probably going to be simulation or action. Um, so which one do I pick? Do I pick simulation or action? I'm probably going to just go for simulation. I think we're going to definitely focus on simulation. We know that simulation games work very well on the PC, so we definitely want to do that. Starbound Mark II. Uh, and we're actually going to call this the Rubber Duck 
Rave. Rubber Duck Racer Pro. No, just Rubber Duck Racer, because we can we can create a sequel later on. Uh, 2D Graphics Mark uh, version 2. Let's go. Haven't had a graphics update yet. Today, Vina has confirmed recent rumors about a new gaming console and announced the Master V. The company claims the Master V is technically superior to the massively successful TES by Nintendo and plans to release it in the coming months. Dang it, we missed out on the launch of a new game, but it's fine. Uh, let's think. Racing simulation. You don't need a story. Uh, tutorials will always help. Um, you know, since we're doing simulations, I guess we can keep everything the same. Because it worked out quite well. I should have tweaked it a little bit, I guess. Uh, like, maybe crank down the level design a bit. Yeah, there's nothing to add in there, so that's fine. And so, uh, what else do we do? Oh yeah, mono sound. So we get better sound. And from what I remember, sound is quite important in simulation games, potentially. Well, let's go for like that. I think that's pretty much what we had anyway. Okay, Rubber Duck Racer. So this isn't a management game, this is a racing game, a proper racing game. We're in control of the Rubber Ducks floating down the river. Not quite as amazing as Rubber Duck Racing Manager <laughs> in terms of uh, these stat points here. Actually, I don't know, we're still cranking out some design and technology. Gonna have to release it soon, but we're still polishing it off and getting some extra points, but we're running low on the cashola. So let's release it and see if we get our major breakthrough here. Okay, new topic, new combination. We did get some level ups from the last uh, from the last game as well, so who knows, that could help us here. If you catch it just at the right time, you can... There we go, generate the game report before the reviews come in. There we go. Tens across the board? Ah, uh, there's... Ooh, ooh. Oh, a nine! Oh, come on! Oh, no! I thought for sure I was going to get a ten. Oh, come on! Oh, it's a high-rated game, but it's not perfect. Oh, man. That was hovering on tens so closely. Ah, oh, our new engine definitely helped. Okay, the Master V has been released. Maybe we'll develop something for that next time. Let's take a look. And see what our game report says. Racing and simulation is a great combination. Dialogue seems to be not important for this type of game. Cool, good to know. But let's pause it there, guys. That is going to do it for today. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of... I was about to say another brick in the wall. Don't worry, I haven't abandoned another brick in the wall. I'm just really excited to be working on this game. Um, thank you very much for watching this episode of Game Developer Tycoon. We will see you all in the next one, where hopefully we get our major breakthrough. We've already got quite a bit of money here from Rubber Duck Racer. We'll see where it takes us. Okay, thanks once again for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.